Hello, so this video will go over how to create uh, something like Udemy, the back end of Udemy, where teachers can create courses with lots of different lectures. So for example, here we have an Excel course and the Excel course will have different kind of titles with lectures underneath each title. Introduction to Excel, you click that and see 11 courses. And then you click another one and click it again to see all the sub courses. So let's go to a back end on Bubble to see how this is done. So we go to data. So I've created two new types down here. First is called sections. So a course section, let's say we're a elementary school teacher, we're teaching physics, chemistry, biology. These would be sections and for example, chemistry would have organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry. These would be the lectures. So therefore, I've also created lectures. So within section, I created a new field, which is a list of lectures. And each section also has a text. Underneath lecture, you can upload a file to a lecture like a PowerPoint. Then each lecture will have a section it belongs to. So physical chemistry would belong to the section chemistry. We have the title and a video URL, so you can attach videos to an individual lecture. And then if you go to the type user, I've also added a list of sections down here. So each user can display their list of sections. So imagine if each user is a teacher, they might be able to upload different courses, just like on Udemy, which or sections, I call them here, and each of them will then have different lectures. Okay, let's see the setup of the page. We first got, and we're going to go from outside to inside, a repeating group of sections, core sections, showing the current users list of sections. So chemistry, physics, biology, for instance. Okay, then Inside of this, here in the elementary, we go to the group section. And this is type section, shows the current cell section. And inside it, we've got a repeating group, which shows the lectures, the parent group sections. So this is the parent group. That section's list of lectures is shown inside. And notice also we've got the layout style full list. So sometimes you may have five lectures, sometimes two lectures, and the repeating groups kind of height will adapt depending on how many lectures we have. So more lectures, it would be a longer repeating group. Okay, and then we have two groups inside the repeating group, the group lecture text, which just shows the lecture title, an expand symbol, and the index. The index always shows the number of an item in the repeating uh, group. So the first one will be number one, the second cell will be number two, the third number three. And then we've got another group, which is the group which allows uh, the user to edit a lecture or add items to it. Again, type lecture, showing the current cells lecture. And this group is inside the repeating group lecture. By the way, all of this will later, of course, the, be posted, including this link to the editor underneath the YouTube video. So now we've got the group lecture edit where you can edit things and click to save it. And then the pop-up, which can show a file and a video. So let's look at the makeup of everything. So we've, we've got sections. Of course, every user will start with zero sections. So therefore, we need to have an input which creates a section and a button, which if you click it, confirms creation of the section. Let's look at the workflow of this. First, we create a new section with the name of the input. Then we add the section we just created in step one to the current user's list of sections. We reset all the inputs. And now, so that immediately the section gets one lecture added to it, we create a new lecture in the same kind of button workflow. We call it first lecture. 
and the section this lecture will belong to, so this is a field type section, is the result of step one, which is also type section, so therefore it's fine. And then again, we alter the section we just created, so chemistry, biology, physics is altered, so the first lecture is added to the list of lectures of physics, chemistry, biology, whatever we add. Okay, so if we create, so let's uh, check this by looking at the editor. So we start with zero sections. Now we create one called chemistry. And it's up here. Now let's look at the next buttons. I've now here, it is already says chemistry. And we can now click the plus button to show first lecture, which is which, what we've created, and click the minus button to hide it again. For this workflow, what have I done? I've created a group, this group section here. It's not visible on page load. And I click collapse this element's height when hidden. I've checked that. And on the workflow of the plus icon, it's an icon I've just pulled over. All I do is I click show the group section and on the minus, I just have hide group section. And now I may also want to have an edit button to edit a lecture. This edit button I've hidden. Why have I done this? So here it's hidden as you can see. Uh, so that only the creator, so the one person who created the course can edit it. So I've got a conditional here. When parent groups lectures, creator is current user, only then the element is visible. And then if we click this edit button, I want to hide this group, which shows the index and the title, and show the edit group. So that's very simple. All I do is hide group lecture text and show group lecture edit. And when I click save, again, show group lecture text, hide group lecture edit. And then I've pulled a few things into this group, such as an input, a multi-line input, which shows the lecture's title. I could even have two such groups below each other, one with a title and one with a lecture description. Here I've got a file uploader, and here I've got another input to input a video URL. And then I've got the save button, so the save button it makes changes to the parent group's lecture. The title will be that of the multi-line. The file will be that of the file uploader. The section will be that of the parent group. It's inside of, and the video URL will be of the input. So now once I'm here and click the plus button to show the first lecture, I can click here to edit it. And now I see the edit abilities. I can now call this uh, physical chemistry. And I could even, uh, I could then upload a file uh, such as uh, FLV player file, and then I can upload any YouTube video, um, let's say something from uh, Y Combinator. Without any further delay, that was I will just loading. <laughs> uh, I can just put it here and I can click save, and it's there. And now let's look at the button new lecture, which creates a new lecture, which again I can edit to call organic chemistry, for instance, and click save. Or a new section is uh, biology, as we had mentioned earlier. And here again we can add a new lecture. I've got to click the plus button to see it. We can call this plants. And we can call this animals. Okay, so the new lecture button works as follows. We create a new lecture. We'll call the title click to edit. So it's not dynamic, it's just text I input it. And the section will be the section of the current cell. And again, the section, so chemistry biology is added so that this new lecture is added to the 
list of lectures of that section. And then to check out whether the video works, I've added a icon here and a pop-up. So when I click the icon, gonna show the pop-up lecture and display the lecture I'm clicking in the pop-up. For that, for the lecture, I've had to make the pop-up lecture type lecture. And here I have a text showing the Pan Group Lectures file and a video. And the video ID is Parent Groups Lectures video URL. So you saw here with the physical chemistry, I pasted a YouTube video URL. And so now if I click here, I can actually play this video inside my Without bubble app. Or here's the file name, so I can just paste that into my uh, browser at the top and then download that file. So this video basically went through how to create, to some extent, also a menu and a sub-menu or lectures uh, and uh, sections and to toggle between hiding and showing them, adding new ones, editing them, and for showing further information in a pop-up. As we see here, of course, here it's empty because I haven't added anything to biology and animals. I hope this helps you. For short tips on bubble, check out tiplister.com linked below. Cheers.